First, for Mr. Campbell, just hypothetically, do you think states should have the right to uh, set the gambling policy within their own borders? Uh, I really can't speak to that. Again, we, we simply pursue our investigations based on existing uh, federal statutes. I, I would defer to uh, our partners uh, from the states in regard to, uh, to that answer. Okay. Well, I ask you all, and this is for any one of the four of you to, to step forward. Um, I think the problem we address is a lot of states want to limit gaming. And they want to limit gaming kind of for the reasons that Congressman Walker said. They feel that it's something that takes advantage of the poor, uh, people who, for whatever reason, have a weakness and results in, in uh, messing up their lives financially. Now, the last question pointed out, there's all sorts of information being gathered. Do any of you have anything that you would like to add to my last comment? I mean, in your positions, do you see people mucking up their lives because of internet gaming? Do you have any anecdotal evidence or real evidence you can tell me about? Any one of you four. Who's ever the most aggressive can go first. I don't know if I'm the most aggressive, but um, we, we've seen anecdotal evidence in South Carolina through a lot of the sweepstakes um, it, situations we've had. We obviously had video poker back in the 90s. Um, anecdotal evidence, um, children were left in cars who died because the mother was in there gambling um, for hours at a time. I, I would like to, if I may, real quick, um, and I, I respect uh, Mr. Liu who gave his the little video presentation. I could, I'm not here today, and I confess I'm not prepared to litigate or debate uh, whether or not what he put in that video is provable and defensible. But what I can say is, is that it is not a violation of the Tenth Amendment when Congress has the authority to regulate um, online gambling under the Commerce Clause. For 50 years, the Wire Act, uh, Wire Act enforcement and precedent has kept gambling on the, out of the air and on the ground where states could better regulate it, whether they prohibit it or regulate it or support it. When, they, when the prohibition was removed unilaterally by a lawyer at the Justice Department, they put it up in the air as well as on the ground where states can't regulate it as easily. Remo removal of the online gambling uh, provision of the Wire Act has eroded the state's ability to, to prohibit or regulate however they want the gambling in their states. And so my, my comment to that is if we don't pass RAWA and no one here codifies what was in that legal memorandum, then that legal memo amended federal law. They legislated from the Justice Department, and that is only something that this Congress can do. As a practical matter, that, well, first of all, does, does any other folks have anything to say on my question? No. Okay. So I'll give you this question. As a practical matter, as, as this is left hanging out there, do you believe this is resulting in a significant increase in gaming in states whose public policy is probably to discourage that gaming? Well, sir, I can I can take a stab at that. Um, the legal the legalization of online gaming in Delaware, Nevada, and New Jersey. Um, there's lots of debate about whether those are overlapping players or not. Um, I would tell you that the growth in online gaming on illegal sites occurred with, without respect to any policy position taken by any government official. Um, it, it grew out of just the, the natural evolution of technology being exposed to patrons. So do I believe more people moved to mobile forms of gambling that were made available by illegal operators? I absolutely believe they did. Um, that's why in our state and many of the people in our industry want to see that become what we traditionally support, which is forms of regulated industry that are subject to fair forms of taxation and, and oversight. Okay, I'll, I'll ask uh, Mr. Klein one, one final question. You're here today, and I assume you're here today because you have an interest in this topic. Anecdotally, in your state, has this loophole or new rule or whatever, whatever you want to call it, do you believe it has resulted in more gaming in Nebraska that wouldn't have happened otherwise? Yes. I, I, anecdotally, I will say that certainly we see people who, who have problems with gambling generally, when you were your, your question earlier. But ha, is there a, a, a greater propensity if, if people have access? Sure there is. Uh, and the, to your point, to the, to the Congressman's point about uh, geolocation, that's with regard to regulated 
areas. We are still not talking about the illegal gambling sites maybe in another country or whatever that have people have Internet access to. And, and I, my understanding is this would give the FBI or the Justice Department the ability to go after those folks. We are still talking about the enforcement perspective about people who are doing illegal operations. And that is what we are looking to, is, is, is how do we enforce the law? And we need a law to be there to be able to be enforced. Okay. You see what I am saying? Right. And I, I apparently Nevada has the opinion that you know, the more the better as long as it is regulated. But in Nebraska, you as a state view gambling as something that takes advantage of people's weaknesses, and you are familiar with examples of people's lives sure. who have been. We, have, we, have, we don't have casino gambling in Nebraska. There is casino gambling in Iowa, which is right across the Missouri River from Omaha. We have a multitude of cases, criminal cases, that come out because of the issues that are caused when people go over and blow all their money in, in the casinos in, in Iowa. It is Iowa. What can you expect? Right. Okay, thanks. <laughs> That's sure.